Year Ten, the Rule of Mystic Mongo, reporting in to the Mountain Homes. Your Highness, your humble servant, Giganlimul Mystic Mongol Fleargold, begs your patience with a report on the occurrences in your empire. The city fortress of Koganasan, more vulgarly known as Boat Murdered, has been a source of constant trouble to the empire. While the riches found deep within the mountain are essential if we wish the nation of Kinmel Bill, the Oaken Tomes, to prosper and crush our foes, Boat Murdered has a reputation for burning through leadership at an appalling rate. While you had seen fit to send many immigrants, and even some of the true nobility, late 1059, communication with the fortress ceased entirely. Of particular note was the sudden cessation of communication from the Baron Melbil Tithlethudib and his consort that he was convinced his wife knew nothing about. Military command decided to send someone disciplined this time to see what was causing Boat Murdered's many problems. As all the prior leaders had failed to clean out the mountain, I carefully examined their records to find out what they had done with their time. All had come to the fortress and admired the arts and crafts, all the legendary artifacts made by the renowned mad dwarves of that forsaken tomb, so I decided to start my rule with a thorough economic audit. Food supplies were good for a fortress of this size, although the low population count worried me. Earlier reports had implied at least a hundred dwarves lived in Boat Murdered. Indeed, there were many vacant bedrooms in the projects near the entrance most of which were not properly licensed and zoned for dwarven inhabitants. I corrected this oversight immediately. Legal records have shown a depressing amount of crime occurring in boat murder, including one depraved dwarf who apparently amused himself by crippling defenseless animals. The cat's injuries to the spine, head, tail, and lungs are too horrible to depict, but I feel it appropriate to attach an image of this dog's plight. Let us never forget what happens when lawlessness reigns free. These deviants need to be brought to heel. Also worth noting is the former ruler of Boat Murdered was on record for repeatedly denying the orders of his superiors. A poor example to set. The economic status was similarly depressing. Demand far outstripped supply on several key metals, unforgivable in a supposed mining fortress. Almost all cloth was imported. The head of the Mason's Guild had jacked prices up on pants and skirts in some strange tops-only clothing policy that I don't wish to dwell on, and all leather prices were set low by the bookkeeper, except for Hippopotamus, which was twice the price of the other leathers. No one seemed to remember who decided on that. I decided a quick interview with the bookkeeper would be prudent. Except not only had the bookkeeper died, attacked, say the records, but so had two of the former rulers, including Tourette Doge, the one wanted for questioning. Apparently the founder of the fortress, he died shortly after defying the will of the nobility. Many of the nobility had died some time after. Exact dates were unavailable, with no dwarf able to give good reason why. The baron and his associate were both dead too, doubtless victims of foul play. How else could two such important dwarves, too busy to expose themselves to danger and surrounded by the royal guard, both die? The army was also a pitiful joke. A few weak soldiers playing royal guard for non-existent royalty. I immediately returned them to active duty, but the numbers in boat murder were too small to replenish the army entirely. A priority had to be made on finding someone to make an example of, and getting the fortress back to something resembling civilization. All this murder and animal cruelty couldn't go on. It seemed a tradition to admire the local art, so I dropped by one of the engraved halls. One wall had six images depicted in a row. I was so sickened that I didn't bother go to the other halls. Sankas, the artist, was apparently one of the previous rulers of Boat Murdered. To string up a deviant like him who had once run the place would send a strong message to all of the other dwarves. Finally, I had found a way to make the fortress sit up and listen. Vertiblalkesh, the Lurid South Tales Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf by Sankus. 
the dwarf is in the fetal position. Kedal du Sim, the hatchet of work. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf by Sankis. The dwarf is burning. Zeril Zodost, the fiery rot. Engraved on the floor is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf and a goblin by Sankis. The goblin is shooting the dwarf. Zuglor Shadkik, the ships of creeping. Engraved on the floor is an exceptionally designed image of an elephant by Sankis. The elephant is screaming. Roder Bamgush, the bald weasel. Engraved on the wall is an exceptionally designed image of a dwarf by Sankis. The dwarf is burning. Akrilbor Sat, the tin chunks of stroking. Engraved on the wall is a masterfully designed image of a demon by Sankis. The demon is striking a menacing pose. Now, I don't know who made the money here, but there was clearly something wrong with them. Another priority of my stay will be replacing the money with coins that better reflect our glory. Kin Bill 1056 Silver Coins This is a stack of three Kin Bill 1056 Silver Coins. This is the silver currency of Kin Bill from the year 1056. On the front of the coin is a rendition of a well-designed image of mandrills. On the coin's back is an image of a tentacle demon. While my room was surprisingly nice, I suspect that trying to bribe me, many of the nobles are dissatisfied with their accommodations. While they languish without even a single platinum-encrusted dining room to their name, the corrupt dwarf Sankus has built himself a royal tomb, complete with multiple platinum statues. I'll have to look at having them melted down and used to make weapon racks for the ruling class. If he stops carving images of dwarves being eaten by elephants, however, I may let him keep his little statuary. Shanty posted, I would not be surprised if 90% of the boat murder population have that doesn't really care about anything anymore line in their bios. These guys have been to hell and back. I bet the human traders are creeped out as fuck when they visit. Why are they staring at me like that? I hate it when they stare at me. And what the hell was up with all those charred bones we passed on the way here? Relax, Jarther. Unload the carts, don't look too closely at the walls, and let's just get paid and get the hell out of here. The walls? Why shouldn't- Oh, oh, Armok, oh, Armok, what is that? God damn it, I told you- Oh, oh, God, oh, shit, look at that fucking dog. What the hell happened here? Look, let's just get the fuck out of here. Tell them the road's too narrow or something. New union rules. I don't give a fucking care. Shit, Jartha, don't touch that lever! Horse Raper posted. Hey, Amalal, what's up with the dwarf over there? Oh yeah, apparently he got attacked by an elephant. I thought elephants were peaceful. Not these ones. Apparently they've got some sort of demonic possession or something going on. We should really ask these guys to set up a safer road. Although last time I mentioned it, I just got a cryptic reply about some kind of final solution involving floodgates and levers. Hey, what's that sound? I, I think someone's murdering a kitten. Uh, that can't be... Oh, Christ. Tell me these guys aren't trying to trade us a totem made out of somebody's pet. Tourette Dog posted, No, seriously, what the fuck? Out of the six dwarves we've seen so far, two are missing limbs, one's moping around naked... I must have a proper surface to work on! One sprinting from one end of the depot to the other while carrying an engraved door. One standing in a shop screaming, I must have a proper surface to work on! Y yeah, and only the last one seems to be, I must have a proper surface to work on! At all normal. What the fuck have you, I must have a proper surface to work on! gotten us into. Almost have a proper surface to work on. Shut the fuck up! Sankis posted, You best not touch my tomb, jerk. Mystic Mongo posted, Don't tell me what to do. I am the law in this pit in the ground. Unknowing Momu Svigod, Eighth Circle War Mage. Take this criminal dog. He thought no one would notice that he had no jobs assigned. 
Fortunately, before he managed to starve himself to death, I told him, at crossbow point, that he was going to start work taming the fortress's hefty supply elephants. When that was done, he was to scour the fortress for burnt bits of dwarf left over from the battles with the demon many years ago. The tame elephants should help protect the dwarves from any sudden attacks that may occur. I was quite unhappy to find out that my three royal rooms were, in fact, one room. I was further angered to find out that my bedroom-slash-dining-room-slash-study was shared with all of the house representatives, the mayor, the hammer, almost all of the nobles, were crammed into a single room. Confusingly, they didn't seem to mind or notice. Once my initial rage died down, I assigned the remaining homeless nobles to the room. No reason they couldn't crash on my dolomite couch. Still, I decided to spend some time making individual housing for at least a few of them. Unib Stesokirith, Hammerer. The Hammerer lives only to dispense dwarven justice. His right lower leg is severely injured. Speaking of the Hammerer, he spent the year in bed adjusting the prices of goods so that he could pretend he still had an effect on the fortress as a whole. He had apparently taken a goblin crossbow bolt to the foot, and none of the dwarves had bothered to remove it. My prayers go out to him. Should he recover, he'll be able to maintain his role as Hammerer. A hammerer, of course, doles out hammerings to criminals, one of the harshest practices of dwarven law. The result is almost always a skull split open like a ripe melon. As there are three criminals walking free in desperate need of a hammer to the face, including former commander Megor Grendel, his speedy recovery would set an excellent example to all dwarves who were considering crime but valued having a skull. You thought we'd forgotten about you, didn't you, Mr. Grendel? I go looking for wood, and all I find is yet more mockery from the criminal mastermind. Itagos Tero said, The Big Hoary Buckle. Engraved on the floor is a masterfully designed image of a logs by Sankis Gatten Bomrek. Apparently all the lumberjacks and carpenters are dead. While I agree wood represents a dangerous weakening of dwarven society, boat murder is in serious need of some bins, and metal ones are difficult to make. Still, none of the workers can be spared. We have precious few haulers as it is, so the fort goes without for a while. I can hear Sankus's laughter echoing after me wherever I go. Sankus Gattenbomrick has been sentenced to thirty days in prison by Officer Mystic Mongol Giganlimu, Violation of Production Order, Injured Party Onul Arakhidin, Trade Minister. As you can see, I grew tired of his foul lacks and had him arrested on some trumped-up charge or another. After two weeks tied next to a rotting kobold corpse by a silk rope, that miserable engraver learned some respect. When and if he stops flinching whenever I walk past, I'm going to grab the masterwork steel hammer and dole out a little justice of my own. Lefari Mamafifi, elf merchant. Greetings from the woodlands. We're enchanted by your more ethical works. We've come to trade. I don't understand why people don't like elves. They don't like pansy gifts made of bone or leather or wood. They only like trade goods made of stone or, better yet, metal. They're considerably more hardcore than the majority of dwarves in boat murdered, myself and the hammerer excluded, of course. And their gifts of cloth did much to alleviate the pants shortage we've been suffering from. I gave them very favorable trade conditions and sent them on their way. The Judicator Mystic Mongol Giganlimo has organized a party at Pigtail Rope. I held a theme party in the jail. The theme was clean up your act before I hurl you into the chasm. Javility was forced, as it should be. One of the dwarves approached me and said he wanted shells, two kinds of ore, three kinds of gem, a kind of cut gem, a rock, and some kind of wood. 
I told him I wanted to not listen to some simpering prima donna bitch about his penicing mittens. Guess who got that way? Tekud Erithlebash, metalsmith, cancels strange mood, went insane. They have gone stark raving mad. Tekud Erithlebash, metalsmith, has burned up in magma. At least one of my predecessors had his head on straight. The humans arrived with the previous year's order of roughly three hundred units of booze. Another theme party was held in the jail. Once again, I gave them very favorable trading conditions and told them to bring more of the same next year, along with maybe some more animals. Nothing has happened to the miasma. Another dwarf actually completed his project and gained legendary skill in engraving. God damn it, we already have two legendary grade vandals. We don't need a third sketching pictures of demons laughing at mandrels on the wall. He was immediately put to use holding. Eddie Mossel Tekak Locast, Ray Seizure, the sweetness of butchers. This is a nice amulet. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is studded with zinc and encircled with bands of green glass. This object menaces with spikes of gneiss and obsidian. On the item is an image of a dog and an elephant in gneiss. The elephant is striking down the dog. On the item is an image of a goblin and a dwarf in brass. The dwarf is shooting the goblin. On the item is an image of a dwarf and a mandrel in opal. The mandrel is striking down the dwarf. On the item is an image of an animal trap in turtle shell. Once winter rolled around, I tried to activate the elephant pump the previous ruler had set up. A series of steel bridges now cross the lava flow at several points, so you should be able to leave it on now. Also, having lava back there keeps all the elephants from using it as a personal playground. And so the rich galena and platinum deposits behind the channel are now within reach. Sadly, the elephants, once released, simply left the pump without triggering the floor switches. I have serious doubts as to the ability of a series of one-by-one -one bridges to block anything. Plus, maybe taming the elephant before releasing it was a bad idea. The pump chamber is all ready to go. After taking this image, I added an access route to it. So if anyone wishes to simply tear out the bridges and plate of the elephant pump and start over fresh, they won't even have to shut off the lava. Also, I'd strongly suggest replacing the bridges with larger 3x3 open left models. Of course, to block the elephant's passage, there's always lava. There's even a constantly active channel not too far away. The year passed without military note, good, because we lack a military, and without the hammer recovering. The fortress received no immigrants this year, had no births, and lost a few dwarves to war injuries or fey moods. However, huge swaths of metals have been mined out, many metal goods were made, a few encrusted with jewels. The nobles were satisfied, all the legendary craft stores were armed and armored. An engraved superhighway was added that goes almost all the way through the mountain. And overall, boat murder now looks much more attractive to immigrants. Which is good, because after all the horrible deaths, it's going to be hard to get immigrants to come at all. The elephants were peaceful, as all herbivores are. The mandrels would occasionally grab a piece of equipment left to rust by the defeated goblin armies. I suspect the challenge they posed was exaggerated by the previous rulers. When the new ruler arrives, sometime in the spring, I shall retire as judicator, acting as the merciful hand of law and merely throwing randomly selected doors into jail for no good reason. It's a hard job, but I wouldn't trade it for any other in the world, except maybe Hammerer. Oh, and to whoever filled the chasm with lava... While technically impressive, it leaves the soldiers without a good place to train. Next game, you might want to consider simply pouring the refuse in with a bucket and leveling up on what comes clawing out. Turnpike Lad posted, God, this game is fascinating. The dwarves at Boat Murdered have gone through some crazy shit. I was exploring through the fortress in adventure mode when I found this lovingly produced rendition of a nice amulet in a tome that was lying on the floor. It looks similar to the amulet mentioned earlier in the thread. Mystic Mongo posted, 
That would be Ray Seizier, The Sweetness of Butchers, made by Boat Murder's third legendary engraver, as if we needed two. Thank mm-hmm. you. 